Hello, hello, friends. Bear with me. As always, I am getting everything all situated for our live. And we'll be starting soon, I promise. All right, I think we're good. All right, if anyone is hopping on to join me tonight, you know the drill. Or maybe you don't. Maybe this is your first time here, and if so, welcome. Um, but if you guys are stopping by, drop a quick comment just to say hello. I always love seeing who's crafting along with me tonight. And yeah, hope you guys are all having a wonderful Wednesday evening. Hello, Kelly. I hope your wedding over the weekend went well. I know you had a little bit of a drive ahead of you. So thanks so much for popping on again. So you guys know we'll take a minute or so, let people kind of filter in, and we're going to get our crafting on. We're going to have lots of fun. I'm going to show you guys how I made this really fun-filled autumn card, which is a little bit more muted for my tastes, um, but I like it that way. So hello, hello, Christian. Hope you're having a good Wednesday, too. Happy Wednesday to you as well, and hello, Dawn. I'm also going to like preface with prior to my live, I lotioned up my hands a little bit and they're like a little more shiny than I'm used to. So if you guys catch any extra shimmeriness or what you think might be oiliness on my hands, I promise it's just lotion. Oh, I'm so glad that the wedding was beautiful and desserts, mm, I'm sure they looked fantastic. And hello, Julia. Julia's behind the ThermoWeb uh, account today, as always. Hope you're having a wonderful evening, friend. And Lauren was on time. How fantastic. I'm so glad you could be here, too. So we've got actually quite the Facebook Live scheduled for tonight. I do think that this is probably a little bit more of one of my more ambitious lives because I have a lot of elements going on with today's card, which I think in the end really makes for a super fun project. Um, we've got a foiled background with a layered stencil. We've got some glitter dust spray and the gold going on with some foiled toner sheet accents of the leaves. We've got a toner card front going on. So let's get into it and just bear with with me tonight and I'm going to show you guys a really fun way to paper piece your flock bits to use with some different companies uh, die cuts so that's going to be a really fun technique to learn as well but let's start by making our background so what I would like to do is I'm going to move my side of sign off to the side and oh, yes ambitious today and you guys are so so sweet hello Carletta thanks so much for stopping by tonight um we're going to start with our background and of course we're going to build that with some distress oxide inks and we're going to start with some scattered straw. I've got my little acrylic block out and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cover this panel entirely. Hello Sharon, thanks so much for stopping by. So I decided to make the background of my card primarily the scattered straw color. It's a really nice, I mean straw is honestly the perfect way to think of it because I kind of think of like a hay color. Um, and we're going to use that for the background. And I'm coloring this entire panel of Bristol Smooth Blending Cardstock. I, I call it Blending Cardstock. That's not the official name. But I'm covering that with the scattered straw. All right. So we're going in really quickly. I don't know how, what the little smudge is for, but that's okay. And then we're going to go in and we're going to distress the edges with some Wild Honey Distress Oxide ink. And this is a really fun background to make. I'm gonna show you guys the stencil that I'm using uh, when we get to it, but it's from Photoplay from their Say It With Stamp line. And I really love this stencil. I was like kind of looking through my stash. I just got this recently. And I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and try this one because I've got a couple leafy stencils in my stash and they all offer something a little different. And I'll get to why I like this one when I pull it out and start using it. And let's see, we've got, Sharon, do we need to do anything to win a prize? All you gotta do is be here and comment. We're gonna pull from our comments tonight to pull a winner. I'll be sure to mention what our prize pack is uh, shortly. Well, I'm gonna key you guys into what we're using along the way, of course. I agree, Kelly. The photo play does have some really great stencils for their Say It With stamp line. So I'm really excited to be using it. And I'll explain why I like this one in particular. Going back in with that blending for the scattered straw. 
just to kind of blend out those edges, making this kind of real quick, getting those real nice fall autumnal yellows going. And as you can see, it's more vibrant on the edges, more um, kind of light in the center. All right, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is let me pull out the, it's called the Leaves Are Falling stencil. And it is a two-piece stencil, which is always perfect for when you're using your deco foils. And um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is I wanna line these up first to make sure I kind of know where I'm looking. So this is how they're gonna line up. One stencil is gonna be just the leaves. The other stencil is gonna have all the veining and stems. So I'm gonna set that one off to the side. Oh, and I'm, I'm so glad you made it. Sorry you had to go on your iPad, but we're glad that you're here, however you can watch. And thank you so much, Julie. It's a really nice tip. I know everyone's been kind of happy with that sort of suggestion lately about using um, an acrylic block for blending just to keep your hands nice and clean. I like it too. And I do love the size of their stencil, Kelly. Absolutely. So we're using some pixie tape. And of course, the pixie tape is going to be included in tonight's prize package. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get some leaves blended up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I do have three colors for the leaves. And we're going to start with some rusty hinge first, which is a really great color. It's like a very kind of burnt orange color. And we're just going to go in over this leaf stencil and I'm just going to kind of blend some splotches and what I love about this stencil is I believe it's like the same leaf just repeated and fitted into the stencil which is actually kind of fun I like just the same pattern over and over there's no variation in sizes which makes it kind of just a very straightforward stencil to use Rusty Hinge is such a good color, Lauren. I agree. And Kelly, yeah, the, the pixie tape is definitely something good to have on your list. I love this new um, pixie tape that we came out with earlier this year. Um, next color, sorry, it, this is Fired Brick that I'm going in with. Another great red for falls and autumnal colors. Let's see, we'll go with a little bit up here. I'm going to kind of be working back and forth with these colors. So I'm... Don't be worried if I'm jumping around. Next, we're gonna use some vintage photo. This will be the third and the last color. Just going in with some brown. All right, just like that. Let's go a little bit down here, a little bit over here. Lovely. All right, so let's go back in with that fired brick blender. Get a little bit of that going, just to kind of blend into those colors. Really get those good ombres. And let's go in with that rusty hinge. And this is gonna get like that, those moments that your leaves really do start changing colors. It'd be actually really cool to capture some green in with this as well. Um, of course, I didn't do that, but it would be something to consider. All right, so let's go ahead, let's do a stencil reveal. All right. Already super pretty and would make a really great background as is, but we're not done, of course. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take some vintage photo and let's go ahead and put it on this block. And let's do it. We'll wet it with a little bit of water. And let's go ahead. Do some splatters. Key um, tip when you guys are splattering, if you have any die cuts or images that you'd rather keep clean and not splattered, cover them because the, the, this has a way of getting places that you didn't intend to. Hello, Tim. Thanks so much for stopping by tonight. And Jen, it's your first time here. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, a tip, Sharon, if your splatters are too big, you can take your uh, acrylic block and you can kind of tap your brush against it and it kind of controls the size of your splatter, keeping them on the smaller side. So let's go ahead, let's do a little bit of fired brick too. Do a little bit, just kind of cleaning off my blending. All right. And we're just splattering. 
getting those nice movements in. Probably gonna have to zap this with a heat gun because I don't have the luxury of waiting around tonight, you know. Usually I can set it aside for 10 minutes and come back to it, and I don't wanna put you guys through that. All right, so we've got our black uh, background all ready to go. Let's see, let's catch up on a couple comments. Krishna, I've been loving stenciling lately. Great way to make the paper you want and the colors you want. Absolutely, making your own pattern paper, that's totally what it is. And I love that because you get all the customization. And hello, Nancy from Maryland. Hope you're having a great evening. What is the name of the stencil? The name of the stencil is called Leaves Are Falling. I'll show you guys the packaging, and it's not in the packaging yet, but it is by Photoplay by their Say It With Stamps line. Um, it's a two-piece stencil. They're six by nine stencils. They're absolutely wonderful from our friends over at Photoplay. All right, I'm gonna take a heat gun real quick, and we're just gonna go ahead and zap this. If you guys are wanting any sort of links for products I'm using tonight, go on and head on over to today's blog post. I've got everything that we're using all linked up for your shopping convenience. Of course, always got to enable just a little bit. You guys are so, so sweet. Thank you so much. And hello, Christine from Upper Michigan. Sharon Fall is my favorite as well. We could all talk for 10 minutes, Justin. This is true. I'm kind of thinking of doing maybe just more of like an informal Facebook Live with you guys in the future and kind of not really even preparing a project in advance, but just kind of like, this is what's on my craft desk. Let's have some fun with some thermal web goodies tonight. And just kind of see where it goes. You guys can all put in your opinions for what direction the live can go in and we can just have a good time talking. All right, so we've got our background. So let's go ahead and we're gonna work on the um, the Blanco that we're gonna layer on top of it. So I've got this uh, panel for the stencil ready. I've gotta go ahead and grab my splatter box. And I wanna make sure I've got this correct. Let's see, because it's gonna be easy if I make sure I know where everything is going. Perfect. So that's where the stencils needs to be, which means I have to spray pixie spray on the other side. All right. All right. Go ahead and close that for a second. Let everything set. Oop. So sorry, pixie spray fell off. Choose your own adventure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just have fun, you know? All right. Usually like to let it set for, oh, about 30 seconds or so. And I can probably use the back side of this, even though it's a little glittery, that's okay. So let's go ahead and get this all lined up. Now that the pixie spray is sprayed on top of it, it's gonna help hold my image in place. All right, just kind of lining it up. There are a lot of techniques that you guys can use to line your stencils up when using layering stencils. Trust me, I am aware of them. I know I am entirely disregarding them tonight. Um, but I've worked with this stencil enough that I have an idea. All right, you know what? It looks, are we frozen? I don't think so. Let's see. Sorry guys, hold on one second. Want to make sure that we're good to go. For whatever reason, my screen had frozen up and I want to make sure we're good. All right. I think we're good. Okay, perfect. Awesome, awesome. Sorry about the delay. I always want to make sure we're good to go. Yes, pixie spray is a must. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to take the transfer gel Blanco. And what, okay, here's another thing that I use for my pixie spray that I'm gonna show you guys. So if you're like me, you always have a backup jar or a couple, you know. So I went ahead and I just took a piece of pixie tape to put on top of my open jar. So anytime I open my drawer to grab for it, I don't have to keep opening the lids to see, oh, which pixie or which uh, Blanco do I need to use? Now it's nice and marked. I can put it in my drawer and really easy to find. So little tip, okay, back, back to today's scheduled programming. Let's go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and put some of this Blanco down. This is not the tool that I meant to grab, but that's okay. We'll make it work. I've got a stencil pal. Let's go ahead and we're just gonna drag it. This is a great stencil to use with pastes. The stencil pal moves so easily over it. I just adore it. 
Let's go ahead, let's clean my tools off. Perfect. You need a stencil pal. It's an absolute must. I love that they come in two packs. I love that they're less than $5 for the two pack. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna put my tools in my tub of water and let's do our reveal. Perfect. All right, and we've got it. I'm gonna be honest, y'all. You really could leave it like this. You could let that Blanco dry because it will dry white and you're gonna have just a really pretty background. And honestly, this one's getting set to the side because I have to wait for it to dry. I might just use it with a white background. All right, soak in my stencil. And we had a wonderful peel reveal. Is your tub of water just water or a little soapy? Absolutely has Dawn soap in it. Christian wants to know, Christian's got a wonderful question. When do you use the regular deco foil versus the Blanco? So first question or first way to answer that for you, Christian, is I wanna uh, say it's gonna depend on what sort of transfer method that you're using. If you have a laminator, you kinda can do both. You can use either the Blanco or you can use the Transfer Gel Duo. If you are using a pressure method to transfer your foils, you have to use the um, the Deco Foil Duo, the Transfer Gel Duo for that. The Blanco is not going to allow for a pressure transfer. Um, they dry a little differently. So what, when the Blanco is going to dry, it's just gonna kind of harden. It's not gonna get any sort of tackiness to it. It's gonna remain the same color, gonna keep that white, which is also a really good way if you guys wanna customize the color of your Blanco, you can get a little mixing cup and you can mix in some of your favorite um, ink refills with it and color it, or maybe even a little acrylic paint. Um, but it's going to dry the color that it's applied and it's going to just kind of be kind of like a, a matte, non-sticky coat. Now, when you use the Blanco and it dries, it's gonna have a little bit of tack to it and it's going to dry clear. So that's gonna be something to take into account as well. Um, the other thing that you want to know, too, is if you are using any of our neon enamel that's part of the Rena K lines, that is something you're going to want to use the Blanco with because that Blanco is going to give that enamel a white backing and it's going to make that enamel pop because there's a translucency to it. So um, here's the rules of thumb. If you're doing a heat transfer method, you can use either. If you're using the enamel, you've got to use the Blanco. If you're using a pressure transfer method, you've got to use the Duo. Other than that, it's just going to come down to preference for what you like. I hope that answers your question okay. Oh, mica powder, you could color it. Absolutely. Absa absolutely. All right, so I'm setting that off to the side. And of course, we've got a panel already dry and ready for you guys. So let me go ahead and grab it because it, that, of course, has gone MIA tonight. I know it's somewhere. Hmm. You know what? I have like a ghost in my craft space because I have misplaced. Oh no, there it is. I have misplaced things for the past two Facebook Lives. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's get this background all situated. Now, I do wanna show you guys one of my new absolute favorite deco foils. I just got it a couple weeks ago. It's not new to the store, but it's new to me. And it is our bronze color. And it is going to give you all of those fall fantasies. I tell you, it's fantastic. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, um, I'm gonna save that little piece. Don't need it right now. And we're gonna go ahead and cut it. Oop. Bronze is so stunning. I love this color. I saw someone from the paper team use it a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, Justin, please tell me you have that color because you're gonna need it. And I didn't, so I ordered it. All right, so let's go ahead and trim it. We're not using my rotary trimmer tonight. I'm just gonna use scissors and that's a-okay. All right, so let me grab, I'm gonna get this all situated in my transfer parchment paper folder. My craft carrier sheet. But look at this color, you guys. Oh, it's gorgeous. Just stunning. And it's gonna, I tell you, fall colors, just chef's kiss. Chef's kiss of foiling. So let's get our laminator. 
all preheated. It's been preheating, oh, for at least a good half hour or so. We're gonna feed it through and we're gonna catch up on comments. Through the magic of TV, ta-da, absolutely. Tim loses things if he has the wrong glasses on. I should, I should count my blessings. I don't have to wear glasses. But that, I would imagine I would have, I would be losing things. I lose things all the time without glasses, so I can't imagine what it would be like with them. I, I can't imagine how much I would lose things if I had to wear glasses. And then I lost the glasses. I would be up a certain creek without a paddle. All right. Let's go ahead and do an appeal reveal. Got a couple of them. Contacts and readers. Ugh, I'm not bragging, I promise. I know that my husband has glasses and contacts as well. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's reveal this. Ooh, y'all, we have a nice transfer. And look at this. I can save this for later. I know I can find a use for it. We're going to be all set up. But look at this. Look at those bronze leaf veining and stems. It is stunning. Love, 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 love. Just perfect. And like I said, that's that bronze deco foil. Just wonderful. Oh, I'm keeping that scrap. Absolutely. All right. So we've got this. Since I have my laminator out and it's already heating, I would like to work on two toner sheets that I have to go ahead and foil really quickly as well. So let's do that. I'm gonna set this off to the side and let's get all of the foiling done for tonight. So the first thing that I want to do, I have gone ahead and grabbed the Happy Everything toner card fronts that come cut down to A2 sizing. And we are going to use this one and we're gonna foil over it. Um, and this is also, this uh, A2 toner card front is is going to be included in tonight's prize pack. So that's good news for y'all. Let's go ahead. We're gonna use more of that bronze. Might as well use the sheet, it's already out. And I'll tell you, I, I'm using like almost two full sheets of foil when I made this project for you guys of the bronze. So it's gonna have to get added back onto my wish list. All right, so we've got that perfect. Hello, Heather. Hope you're having a good night. All right, so let's go ahead. We're taking a microfiber towel and we're gonna go ahead, wipe it off. And we're gonna wipe the back of our foil off too. All right, wonderful. We're gonna go ahead, take our toner card front, line that up. And we do, we sell the craft carrier sheets that run through the laminator. That's actually what this is. It's just very well loved. And it's even got a really nice interior finish. It's almost like a wax paper finish, but it's not waxy. It's just kind of grippy. I love it. Use it for every single time I'm crafting. And oh, Delina, I'm so glad you're here too. And hello, Sally. All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna foil this. Oh, Sally, you are so sweet. Thank you. I'm going to grab a drink of water. Oh, Lois, you're so sweet, too. Thank you. I'm glad that you're learning things. And also, Utana, if I, or Utana, I'm so sorry. If I didn't say hello already, welcome. Letting this go ahead and go through. Can that carrier be used in a mink machine? I don't have a mink machine, so I can't um, attest to that. I apologize. Oh, so Patricia's got a lot of other adhesive transfers. Well, that Happy Everything is a great one. I'm actually using the toner card front tonight, but you are right. Those adhesive transfers are just wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's do a peel reveal. Y'all, I can look on the back of this and tell how good of a transfer we had, but we've got that bronze all ready. Oh, gorgeous. Just gorgeous. And we're going to do some die cutting and some ink blending when we get to it. So we've got that all situated. I'm going to save this because I could really use those scraps for something fun later as well. All right. So let's clean up this all this bronze foil that I've got all over the place. This foil just makes me so happy. It's such a good one. Great if you're going with any sort of natural earthy tones. Oh, I love it. All right. 
YouTube. Look, you can see that perfect brown bronze color. Oh, I love it. Just love it. All right. Yep, sentiments. I, I love, I, y'all, I'm just happy with my crafting tonight. All right, so next what we're gonna do is I'm going to take um, the Laura Kelly Dauntless Diamonds toner sheets. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do a wagon red foil transfer to it. I'm just gonna do the transfer for you guys. We're actually not gonna use the sheet. Spoiler, I'm gonna throw it in my, in my stash and with all these red and whites going on, I already know I'm gonna make a Christmas card out of it because um, it's giving me candy cane thoughts, but we don't need to skip ahead to Christmas just yet. But I just like to do all my steps with you guys. Lois, do you do a tutorial on saving, on your saving foil sheets? I don't, you know what? I'm sure in previous lives I have how you can use them. But I think I don't have a full-on tutorial yet. But what I recommend, Lois, get the solid black toner sheets. You're going to be able to transfer those bits and bobs over and give them a little bit more of a paper um, weight to them, which is going to make you be able to transfer it to more crafting. I think I'm going to be doing some sort of like a recycling stretch your stash Facebook Live very soon, and I promise that's going to be part of it. Um, but I would definitely get those solid black toner sheets. It's a great idea. All right, so we've got our wagon red sheet. We've got our Dauntless Diamonds. And this Dauntless Diamonds toner sheet is also included in tonight's live. The Laura Kelly lines are just so fun and whimsical. They make you so happy. And I love that she has every color of the rainbow as an option for her foil colors. Just perfect. All right, let's see. We've got it wiped off. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna transfer it over, get it into my carrier craft sheet pocket, bring my laminator back over. Was that a dry cloth you used to wipe the sheets off? Yes, a dry microfiber cloth, absolutely. What's the best way to store foils? I just haven't been, but I'm uh, looking for a new way to actually see them. Dawn stores hers in clear binder sleeves. That's a really clever idea, Dawn, because I'm sure they're really easy to grab. I, oh my gosh, I'm going to say something, and I know we all don't have the luxury of this, so please don't come for me. I have an entire drawer just dedicated to all of my deco foils. They're all nice and laid out. I'm actually now at the point that I have to stack them too high, meaning the number two, T-W-O high. Um, and that's how I use mine. Um, but I love Dawn's method. That's fantastic. All right. So we've got our Dauntless Diamonds. Oh, I love you guys can see all those little bubbles, which mo hopefully means we're going to have a good transfer. Oh, look. You can sometimes look at the negative, and you know, this is getting saved too, let me tell you, to see how good of a transfer you had. Laura will be right over to craft. Oh my goodness, you're welcome whenever time. Ever, anytime you're in the area, you wanna craft, Lauren, you let me know. Look at this, just perfect with that wagon red. Oh, I love it. Love, love, love. All right. Yes, those Dauntless Diamonds are fantastic. And actually what I did with them is, because now we're going to move into a little bit of ink blending. I have, I just used it to die cut three leaves. Just these three little leaves, and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to ink blend them up. So let's work on a little bit of ink blending right now. So I'm working on everything in steps. Like I said, it's a little bit of an ambitious life. All right, so we've got that fired brick, and I'm just going to go ahead. We're going to do it entirely fired brick. And you're going to be like, but Justin, you're covering up that beautiful red color. It's going to work. Don't worry. Because you're going to get those little pops of foil and they're going to act wonderful. Wonderfully. All right. So we've got that. Now let's go in with that vintage photo. And we're just going to kind of distress the, the bottom parts of each leaf. Just like that. Perfect. And we'll go back in with a little bit of that fired brick. All right. Wonderful. And we're going to save those three leaves for later. I actually, when I was prepping for this the other day, I had fun with some other colors. So I use this with all of those colors I use to blend up that background. I just like how the red uh, leaves pop on my wreath. So these are just going to get saved for a later date.
All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna put the inks. I gotta put my tools away for a second because we're gonna go back in. I already have, and so these leaves, oh my God, I didn't tell you guys. These are from the Fall Leaves Backdrop by Long Fawn. Um, and I just took these three little stitch leaves. That's all I wanted to use. I needed some leaves, so we're using that. And then I went in and grabbed the Magic Iris Fall Leaves add-on by Lawn Fawn. And you're like, but Justin, there's stitch leaves from here too. You're right, I didn't use them. I don't know what I was thinking. But I did go ahead and die cut two of these Magic Iris Fall add-ons. And we're gonna do some ink blending with these right now. So let's go ahead, put that off to the side. Rub with cloth and red will pop, yes or no? Absolutely. Absolutely, because that's gonna clean off that foil, remove sort of that oxide uh, inky finish, and you're gonna really be able to see that foil pop. Totally on point with that uh, suggestion. All right, so let's go ahead. So I've got, I cut these out of craft cardstock. I'm just gonna kind of go in and we're just gonna kind of blend up. So this is the Wild Honey. I'm using the residue ink. Let's see, we'll do that. Just kind of do coordinating leaves. I'm gonna keep this real simple, y'all. Let's go in with some scattered straw next. We'll do over here. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Okay, perfect. We'll go in with some rusty hinge. Just kind of going in, getting all those colors onto that craft card stock. We're gonna do something real fun with this. Something a little different for me, because usually all my colors pop and this is very subtle. All right, let's go in some fired brick. Just kind of get those fall colors going. That one's gonna go on the bottom layer, that's okay. Perfect. And we're gonna go in with some of that vintage photo. Just kind of go around the center ring. You're like, guys, he's moving too fast for me. What is he doing? There ain't no certain pattern I'm really doing. I'm just kind of moving with the colors. All right, so we've got those. Let's go ahead and glue these together. Let's see. How's this one doing? This one might need to get cleaned out. We'll use the other one. I've got two bottles. So we're gonna go ahead, just do around the circle, like that, like so, like that. And we're just gonna layer, just to give a nice sort of wreath effect. This is not a wreath of Franklin's. This is a wreath of fall leaves. And let's go ahead, put this weight down on it. I do have an older bottle that I'm trying to use up, but it's, it's, at, its, it's at its end. All right, Lynn had a question. Lynn says, how do you tell the difference between foils that need to be heat transferred and foils that are pressure transferred or are they interchangeable? So when it comes to the deco foils, Lynn, all of our deco foils can be used interchangeably. It really just depends on the gel that you're using with it. So like I was talking about earlier, we've got our duos and our blancos. Blancos have to be used with a heat transfer method. They're not gonna work with that pressure transfer method. But our duo gel, you can transfer any of the foils with either a heat or a pressure method. So really, when you're using ThermoWeb products, um, all of our foils right now are all situated to be used either with a pressure or heat method. Um, it really depends on what sort of gel you're using. All right, so we've got this all situated, so let's get into some glitter dusting. All right. So I'm gonna grab my box again. And we're gonna put a piece of paper down and I'm gonna grab my glitter dust spray. We're using the gold again, if you guys have been here for one of my recent lives. And we're just gonna go ahead and glitter the heck out of it. 
All right, come on. All right. And you guys can see all of that amazing glitteriness. I'll bring it a little bit closer. It's just got to dry. But you guys can see, I clearly applied something because there's a big old ring of it. Yep. So, Tim, it is our glitter dust spray in gold. We do have it in three colors. We have gold, silver, and iridescent. Gold is just, for me, like the essence of a fall metallic next to bronze, clearly. Oh, isn't that pretty? So, I got to set this aside to dry. We'll come back to that. I have to set it somewhere that I don't forget where I put it. That's not a problem. All right. Now let's work on putting together our little fox. So we're cleaning off our workspace. The glitter dust is fantastic. It's going to give any of your papers that perfect glittery finish. Oh, Lauren's tail. She is shopping after this. Have fun, my friend. I hope I'm enabling you. Can that glitter spray be shipped in cold weather? Um, you know what? I think it can. I don't think that there's any temperature restrictions on it. Uh, Julia, if you know otherwise, just let me know. I don't think that it's a problem, though. Um, so, all right. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to... Oh, we've got a little bit of that residue gold, but that's okay. So I have die cut from Flock some of these... Um, Foxes, and this is the Foxy Family uh, Lawn Cut Set by Lawn Fawn. And what I've done is I've die cut from Flock. This is our white latte, black velvet, and orange glow. The orange glow is going to be included in tonight's prize pack, mind you. And I've gone ahead and die cut this. But now you're probably thinking, Justin, why is everything still intact? When I die cut stuff, it comes out of place. And you're right. That's because I went ahead and used another ThermoWeb product, which is our Easy Cut Adhesive. And it is double-sided permanent adhesive that you can adhere to the back of paper and then die cut it. And it kind of helps create it as a sticker. So this all has that Easy Cut Adhesive already on the back of it. Um, and it's fantastic. These sheets come in sets of five. It's really a wonderful way to use any sort of die cuts that might be a little bit on the delicate side if they have any sort of thin lines. Um, but it's also fantastic for these paper piecing dies from Lawn Fawn. Lauren, hashtag enabled by Justin. We're gonna make it a thing. We're gonna make it a thing. Oh, Sharon's gonna use some of the princess colored foil. If you're talking about the fairy tale line with all the iridescent colors, those are some of my all time favorites. So have fun with that. All right. So what we're going to go ahead and do, I have the background piece, which I have just from black or brown cardstock. I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending first over our flock, because do remember all of our deco foil flocks can be ink blended. So I'm going to go in with some vintage photo and just a little blending brush. Let's see, get as much off as I can. And I'm just gonna kinda go in and ink blend the bottom of this fox's tail just to give a little bit of shadow. And we're gonna do a little bit over here as well, just to kinda discolor this side of his body. Just like that. Perfect. And that should be good. So what we're going to do is, because I have everything all die cut already, we're going to start with this black outline. And I just got to separate it because it's like a sticker. Oh, fooey, Justin. See, this is the downside of you not having fingernails. All right, so we've got it. There we go. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pop all these little pieces out. Just have to make sure to clean them up later. Actually, I'm sitting here trying to peel the backing off and now that I remember, that's not what I had to do. So, mistake on my end, but that's okay. Let's go ahead, we're gonna pull all those little bits out. And hit a little legs, little, little legs. Let's go ahead, we're gonna grab these. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna line this up on that backing piece. Go ahead. All 
All right, and now it's all stuck. We've got that outline of our fox all in black, ready to go. And then I can just sort of start paper piecing things. So let's do our orange bits. Let's do his body. You could just kind of peel and pop the pieces. It takes a little bit of time, but it's well worth it. And I love that he's gonna be all flocked. And we're gonna do a little bit from the tail. And I do have one little last piece of ink blending that I have to do, but we'll get to that in a minute. All right, we're gonna go ahead Tweezers are definitely your friends with those little bits. All right, so we've got that. That's all the orange I think I need, so the orange can kind of be tucked away. But I really quickly have to grab my Kish Flamingo because I need to do the inside of his ears. I didn't want to do a piece of carnation, a pink carnation flock, so I'm just gonna go in and color his ears pink. Just like that. Let's do a little bit more. That one's got a little bit of the brown ink, but that's okay. Perfect. All right, and so then what we're gonna do is let's do the tip of his tail. And I know if I haven't caught any questions, as soon as I'm done paper piecing this, I'm gonna look through and if you guys had any questions, we're gonna get to it, I promise. All right, let's do his right side of his face, pop out that eye. We'll do the left side of his face and pop out that eye. like that we'll do his ears I realistically could have left the ears brown like that that looks super cute let's go ahead and do the pink for and like I said I just used that white latte and I dye uh, I ink blended over it with some kitsch flamingo since we can color our flocks instead of just die cutting for these two little pieces all right so we've got that, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do his eyes. Like I said, tweezers, your friend. So let's go in. There's one eye. And the second eye. And I've got a Floxy Foxy. Look at that, isn't he cute? Got a little bit of shading to him but he is just this perfect little flocked fox. Very much like puzzle pieces, absolutely. I am gonna save my little bits. I'm kind of looking right now and this is giving me some skunk vibes and I kind of wonder if I can do something with that in the future. So we're gonna set these aside for later. Excuse me. All right, I promised you I'd go back and look at some questions. Let's see what we got. Sharon didn't know it was possible to shade the flock. Absolutely. You got to try the flock. You got to try shading it. You can use oxides. You can use dye inks. I'm sure you could use pigment inks. I just don't own a lot of them. All right. Yep. And then Julia backed me up. She said, ink it, stamp it, emboss it. So many possibilities. Emboss on it. You could try. Absolutely. Looking like Mickey Mouse. I guess in the beginning he probably did. Pink in the ears, puzzle pieces, putting a puzzle together. Absolutely. Sharon just got back from England. I'm heading there in February. We kept our bananas peeled looking for a fox, badger, and hedgehog maybe next time. Absolutely. Pam says, how cute. Oh, thank you. You guys are learning stuff. Christian says, when someone asks what your favorite tool is, I struggle. I have like 30 reverse tweezers in the top 10. Absolutely. Oh, you need them. You need the reverse tweezers. You can use stencils and emboss it that way too. You can do that. I've done that before. It's wonderful. So many possibilities with the flock. Really, you guys. 
Oh, going to going again in June. That's fantastic. And your dog is named Mickey Mouse. My apologies. I thought you meant the critter or the um the mouse. So, all right. So let's go ahead and we can kind of start putting some pieces together. I have a little bit of ink blending to do. I'm going to go in. I'm going to grab my Happy Everything stamp and die set because I do want to die cut my uh sentiment. So let me go ahead. Where is that? Here we go. I've got it all on one magnetic sheet for both sets. And I want to use that really big happy die. Oop, there we go. So let's go ahead, put that around happy. Use some pixie tape to adhere it down. Remember, so I already told you guys a handful of things that are in our prize pack tonight. We already went over the adhesive transfer designs for the Happy Everything along with the toner card fronts. So you're going to get both of those. You're also going to get some of this pixie tape as well. Some of that orange glow deco foil flock, which is what we used for the bulk of our fox. And you're also going to get some of those Laura Kelly Dauntless Diamond toner sheets. Now, why don't I let you guys know what the last thing that you're getting is? And that's going to be... You're going to pick any two deco foil colors from our shop that you would like, as long as it's one of the regular sizes. So that's what our winner will win tonight. It's a nice selection of prizes. I really hope whoever wins gets some bronze deco foil if you don't have it already, but I get it. I get you. There's so many possibilities. All right. So we've got our happy all die cut. Let's go ahead. We're going to take off our die. I love that these come with some coordinating dies that it just makes everything so fantastic. And I'm gonna grab my paper trimmer because I want to trim off my sentiments and we're gonna do that, you make me so happy. Of course, make sure my other one is all ready to go. Let's see, yep, maybe a little bit more. Perfect. A little bit more. Great. And then we're going to go ahead. I bent it a little bit, but it won't affect the project. Go ahead and cut that. And cut that. Awesome. And then what am I going to do with this? Save it for another card. Throw it in my scraps and use it later. All right. So let's go in, let's do a little bit of ink blending. We're gonna go in with some scattered straw. We're gonna go right over this. Just so the You Make Me So is gonna be all scattered straw. Oh, you're so sweet, Rose, thank you. Not blending, not bending, adding texture, absolutely. What's the best cutter? Mine seems to be crooked. Um, That's kind of like a, Everyone's got their own preference. You know, I've seen so many different suggestions. I use the Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer. It's supposed to be self-sharpening. Haven't really had any issues with it, so that's the one I stand behind, but I've seen so many suggestions out there. All right, let's go in with some more scattered straw. We're gonna go over this happy die cut. All right, just like that. Next, we're gonna go in with some, oops, sorry about that, wild honey. Go back in with some scattered straw just to kind of smooth out that blend. And finish this up with, oh, we'll go in with a little bit of fired brick just to kind of warm that bottom portion. Just give it a little bit of red. And blend that with some wild honey. Get a real nice blend going on there. Almost like a, a fall sunset, you know? Ugh. I love it. So I think we can start putting things together now. And you know what? As ambitious as I thought this live was, it wasn't. So let's go ahead. I'm going to grab, where's my card bases? I know I have card bases somewhere hiding. You know, guys, I always say that I always, there's always something missing. I can never escape it. So let's see. If I don't have a card base, that's honestly like the least of my worries. I did cut them in advance. There they are. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna take some Tape Runner XL and we're gonna go ahead and just kind of 
get the background all nice and situated for this card base. Piece in the center, of course. Oh, you guys are so sweet that you think it looks easy. It really is not that hard. You just gotta have like a little bit of a reference point, you know? All right, let's see. Can I bring this down just a bit? Tequila Sunrise, that sounds wonderful right now, let me tell you. It was quite the day at work. Crafting is my happy place tonight. Oh, Sharon, thank you so much for stopping by. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. And Jilly, I'm so glad you made it. All right, so we've got our background piece all situated to our card base. Let's wipe this really quickly. Got that. So let's go ahead and take our glittery uh, fall wreath. Oh, look at all of that gold glitter, you guys. Oh, I love it. Love, love, love it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take some ultra bond adhesive. We're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna just put a couple bits on so we can get everything nice and adhered. All right. And then we're gonna go ahead and put that, let's see, I think right like there. That'll look perfect. We'll take an acrylic block for some pressure. If you ever need pieces to a little bit of pressure to get them to adhere, always works nicely. Oh, Kelly, great tip about the cutters of holding the plastic shield. It does really help quite a bit. And hello, Sharon. Thanks so much for stopping by. Oh, Gina, thank you. Super, super fall pretty today. All the, all the prettiness of fall going on. All right, let's go ahead. I'm gonna take a couple pieces of 1 16th inch foam tape to put behind my fox. And I'm actually remembering that I have to adhere some of the little leaves that we did with the Dauntless Diamonds. Can't jump too far ahead. All right, so let's adhere some of those leaves. So we're just gonna go ahead and do this leaf over here. And we'll do another leaf down here. And our final leaf will go off to the side. And that's just gonna add a nice little bit of like red foil that really helps bring out those fall colors. Love that. All right, so we've got that. So we'll go ahead and get our fox all adhered with our foam tape. Put him right in the center. Oh, isn't he sweet? I love this. Before I push it down, make sure he's right where I want him to be. We're getting there, we're getting there. And we just need a little bit more foam tape behind our sentiment bits. The diamond texture is a lot of fun. You guys can really see how it is reflecting right now too. It's just, it's, it's kind of like a plaid to me too. And plaid is so perfect for fall. Plaid is like the pattern of fall in my opinion. Like that and a hound's tooth is really good for fall in my opinion. He is, he's like jumping the leaves. He's like, you just raked all these leaves. I'm gonna go mess them up because I'm a mischievous little sly fox. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna get this, you make me so adhered. Oop, use our tweezers. Let's see, just like this. Perfect, and then we're gonna do some foam tape behind our happy letters. You know what? I probably can just do one big piece right across instead of a bunch of little ones. Time saver. You know, I'm gonna trim a little bit more off that. And then we'll do it up here. 
let's see, probably do, the foam tape, the iCraft 3D foam tape, you're right, Tim, it does add a lot of dimension, really makes your different elements of your project pop. I love adhering some things directly onto my cardstock and then adhering other things with the foam tape because it makes those items really stand out and the other items kind of take a little bit of a back seat um, when you really want to focal, put a focal point on something specific. All right, let's see. And put this happy. You make me so happy. You know what though? This could probably, I wonder if I can move this just a wee bit. See, I'm lucky because I can. Sometimes you're not so lucky. Perfect. All right, you guys. I think we've got this all together. So let's go ahead. We'll recap everything that we made. I always like to pull the original card and compare it with the new one. Okay, this is pretty good. I always like to kind of compare. I like this. I think I did a pretty good job. This could probably be a little straightened and I can always fix that after the fact and that's okay. Um, we did a really cute job. They turned out super, super cute. Now I got two really cute fall cards. Um, but let's go over what we used tonight. So we went ahead and created a background using the Leaves Are Falling stencil by Photoplay, which we did with some Distress Oxide inks, a little bit of splattering, and then we used our Decofoil Transfer Gel Blanco with our bronze Decofoil to get that really awesome veining and stems in. Um, we went ahead, we did our Happy Everything, a two-toner card front that we used with the bronze deco foil to get our sentiment, which of course we use the coordinating stamp and die cut set to cut it out. We also use the Dauntless Diamonds toner sheets by Laura Kelly with her wagon red foil to get these fun little leaves. For the background for these wreaths, I did some ink blending on top of craft cardstock, and then I sprayed the heck out of it with our gold glitter dust spray. And finally, using our Orange Glow White Latte and Black Velvet Flock, I used the Foxy Family die cut set from Lawn Fawn for our little critter right in the middle. Oh, isn't he so, so cute? So yes, super, super cute. Um, oh, you guys are all saying that he's adorable. That makes me so happy. That was faster than I was thinking to do with so many layers. Christian, I have to be honest, I think so too. I thought when I was prepping for this live that I'm like, oh, Justin, aren't we being just a tad ambitious with what you're trying to accomplish in a Facebook Live? But I do like to prep a couple elements in advance and I always think that helps. So I think having our Fox all die cut in advance helped a lot. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's check some comments. And oh, don't forget the orange flock. Yes, the orange glow flock. We did use that as well. And of course, that is going to be included with tonight's prize pack. Um, Utana, would you put the link for Justin's blog up once again? I'm sure Julia will get to it. Just stay tuned. And then Lauren is heading over to shop. Oh gosh, I do not blame you, friend. It is a really fun way to spend Wednesday evenings. Um, and just so you guys know, the next Wednesday that we will be crafting together, my next Facebook Live is scheduled towards the end of the month on October 26th. I know you guys kind of got a little lucky. We had me uh, three lives in one week and I had so much fun with you guys. Um, but the next one is scheduled for October 26th. Uh, think pumpkin thoughts, you know? We've got some fun going on that week. Don't want to give the entire uh, theme of, or of my project away excuse me, away. But if there's anything that you guys want to see, I am still in the planning phase. So if there's any spe uh, special techniques you guys would like to see in a Facebook Live, please let me know so I can do it in the future. So, all right. Yeah, so far away. I know, I know. We. This is just how the schedule worked out this month. There's a lot going on behind the scenes at ThermoWeb and always know both our fabric and our paper team. We've got full weeks of fun coming your way. Lots of fall themes coming with our themed weeks. Um, we've always got something up our sleeves to share with you guys. So this was absolutely wonderful. Let's go over again what's in our prize pack for tonight. And I would say, Julia, whenever you get a chance, we're probably good to pull a winner for tonight's live. Um, but we're going to have for our prize pack, we've got the Happy Everything Adhesive Transfer Design with our Happy Everything A2 Toner Card Fronts. Uh, tonight's winner is also going to be getting a roll of our pink pixie tape. So you're going to have that as well. You're also going to be getting 
getting um, two deco foils of choice. You're gonna be able to choose any two colors from our shop that you want, as long as there are regular sizes. Um, we're also going to give away an Orange Glow Flock Pack, and we're going to be giving away one of the packs of the Laura Kelly Dauntless Diamonds Toner Sheets. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, if you guys love giveaways, don't forget we do have an October challenge. Just went ahead and launched it today. Um, so go ahead, be sure to check that out and enter your Halloween fun theme projects. Um, and also we just have a winner. We've got Christian as tonight's winner. Oh my gosh, congratulations, friend. So glad that you're gonna be winning tonight's prize pack. So Christian, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is once we finish up with tonight's live, give me a couple minutes. Um, I'm gonna send you a quick Facebook message. We're gonna get a little bit of information from you and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get your prize pack on the way. So um, Christian, congratulations and thanks so much for tuning in, but thank you everybody for tuning in. This was a fantastic live. I had so much fun. Um, but yes, keep me posted if you guys have anything specifically that you would like to see for an upcoming live. I always like to hear any sort of tips and making sure that I'm sharing things that you guys want to see. Uh, don't forget as well, like I was saying, we just launched our October challenge today. The theme is Halloween fun. Only rules is it's got to be kind of a Halloween, spooky, scary, candy, trick or treat, some sort of theme project. And we got to see what thermal web project, uh, products you're using in it. But go ahead and enter it. Our winner this month is going to receive a $31 gift card to the Thermal Web website to shop for whatever you want, of course. Um, and yeah, I already went over when our next live will be on October 26th. And keep me posted if there's anything coming up that you guys want to see for a live. And finally, if you guys are going to get your shop on, uh, we've got our link for tonight's blog post which has all of the products that I used. Um, of course, Thermal Web products, front and center, easy for you guys to find. Even if you're looking to possibly shop for some of the other items that you might not be able to find on Thermal Web, but on some of our other friends' websites, those are linked up for you guys as well. Um, I greatly appreciate you guys using that blog post and to do your shopping. Um, and then also as well, uh, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, still always wanna talk about our latest release, which does include both the Happy Everything and Oh Hello lines. So you're gonna have both the stamp set and dies set. You're going to have the A2 toner cards. You're going to have our adhesive transfer designs for both of those lines. And then we've also got our super fun cocktail set uh, for adhesive transfers, which is called Cheers. So be sure to check that out if you're heading over to the Thermal Web shop tonight or anytime soon. Don't forget that if you haven't yet either placed an order on the Thermal Web website, when you log on, you should see a prompt that asks for uh, your email address and that your first purchase, you can get 10% off. So if you haven't joined the Thermal web newsletter yet be sure to put your email in you guys will get a link for uh getting 10 percent or coupon code for 10 percent off your first purchase so that's always nice to get a little bit of savings we always offer free shipping at that 50 dollars mark as well so it's really easy kind of to hit that and to take advantage of the free shipping uh costs so thank you guys all so so much oh my gosh i just went on a whole spiel of everything that we have coming up um, but you guys are so, so wonderful. Congratulations once again to our winner, Christian. You are absolutely fantastic for tuning in, but the tr truth of it is, is you all are fantastic. And I appreciate every single one of you for being here tonight. Um, so thank you, Christian and Lois and Kelly and Susan. Thank you, Kelly and Sharon. Of course, my wing ladies, Don and Julia, you guys are absolutely wonderful. And I appreciate all of your help for making our Thermal Web Live so successful and fun. Um, so thank you guys all so, so much. And Judy and Lauren, Cindy, you guys are absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stick around for about a minute or so longer. Um, if you guys have any last minute questions, I'm here to help. Otherwise, of course, you'll see me on October 26th for another Facebook Live. And also, I'm always reachable in the ThermoWeb fan club. I am, of course, one of the moderators for our wonderful crafting group. If you ever have a question for something ThermoWeb related for what you're crafting on, always feel free to write a comment, post it on our wall in our group, tag me in it, and then I can find it and I'll get to you as soon as I can to answer your question. Um, always want to be helpful. Always want to be available whenever I can and get you guys to make sure that you're creating exactly what you want to. So let's see. Oh, Sharon, you're so, so sweet. Thank you so very much. And then once again, Christian, don't forget, I'll be sending you a message shortly. We'll get you all squared away for your prize. Um, start thinking about those two foils that you want. But thank you guys all very much for being here tonight. I always love crafting with you. Once again, my name is Justin Adkins, part of the Thermal Web Paper Education Team and one of the administrators for our Thermal Web Craft Room Facebook group. Can't wait to see what you guys make and post in the group. And I'm even more excited for our next live later this month. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday night, everyone, and stay crafty.